In this video, we'll learn how to configure event destinations for Lambda functions using the serverless framework. We'll get started by cloning the repository that I've linked to in the descriptions for this video. I'm going to copy it here, go over to my VS Code editor, and run git clone for this repo. Now inside of this, there'll be a few different examples that you could use if you wanted to play around with event destinations. In this case, I'll be using one repo inside of the ARN-based event destinations folder. In here, in serverless.yml, we're able to configure our function hello starting with a destination in the destination section. It's using both a on success and on failure destination. And as you can see, it's using currently an ARN for an SQS queue and an ARN for a function. Now, neither of these resources exist in our AWS account right now. So I'm gonna create an SQS queue in AWS and then pop the ARN in here to test with. Let's do that now. In AWS here, I'm gonna to go to SQS and I'll create a queue inside of SQS. We'll call this one demo destination queue. And we'll use this both for successes and failures. I'll leave it as a standard queue and click quick create queue. Now I should have this new queue highlighted, but if I don't, I'll need to go over and click on it over here and then copy the ARN value for this queue. Then I can go back to my code editor and replace the on success and on failure ARNs with this actual queue. Now I'll save this here. Now that this is in my config file, I should be able to change directories into the ARN based event destinations folder, which should have the serverless.yml file inside of it. And then I can run serverless deploy. Now with this deploying, let's review what else is in the serverless.yml file. At the very top, I have an org and app name. Now this will correspond to my serverless framework pro account. I've also got a service name, a provider for AWS and a runtime of Python 3. Now, if you are not using Framework Pro right now, you can just comment out the org and app name here, and that'll work just as you're used to it. But if you want automatically instrumented debugging tools, alerting, and a bunch of other features, you can check out Framework Pro at dashboard.serverless.com. Now, this function that I'm currently running is inside of handler.py. And in handler.py, we have a starting function here that we're gonna be able to fail with if we have anything other than success as true inside of the input body. So this is how we'll be testing it later. We'll have success equals equals true when we want it to succeed and go to our success destination, which is the same queue actually as our failure destination, but it'll produce a different result than when we go and fail the result using the raise exception. So now that our function is deployed, let's test this out. I'm going to scroll up and get the name of my function, which is ARN based destinations dash dev dash hello starting. And then I can run a command to invoke this function. So let me clear the screen here and I'll run AWS Lambda invoke and I'll do a backslash here so I can enter the next part of the command on a new line. I'll do dash dash function dash name and we'll paste in the function name here. And then I'll do another part of the command with invocation type. In this case, I want this to be an event and I need to create a payload for this function. So I'll do dash dash payload and a single quotation, an opening curly bracket. And in here, I wanna have success because inside of my Python function, I'm referencing success incoming from the event. And I want this success value to then be true. In this case, this will prompt the chain of logic that goes through here and returns a response and eventually also returns details to the success event destination. Now I can do response.json here, and this is just a necessary input so that if there was anything to output from this invoke request, it would go into response.json. It's actually not gonna be used right now, but it'll still create the file. So with this, I can hit enter, and it looks like I need to fix the invocation type, so I'll go over to that right now and add an N here, and now I can hit enter again and this should work. The status code of 202 means that it's been accepted, but it hasn't been processed and it didn't return anything to me. And this is what we'd expect when we're working with event-based, and this is what we expect when we're working with the event-based invocation type. We can run this a few more times to send a few more payloads into our Lambda function, have it process them successfully, and then eventually output them to the queue as a success result. But we can also make this a little bit different. So I'm gonna go back to the success portion here. And instead of true, I'm gonna go with false. Now this should end up working fine to be accepted into the queue for the Lambda function, which is why we're getting a status code of 202, but it's gonna fail inside of the Lambda function and then be output to our failure destination. In this case, the failure and success destination are the same SQS queue. 
So let's see what's going on inside of the queue. Now, make sure to run this a few times so you have enough input data to see what's going on in the queue. And let's go back to our console here. Now, inside of the demo destination queue, I can click queue actions, view delete messages, and I'll start polling for some messages. It might take a little while for these messages to appear, so don't be surprised if you have to hit the stop now button every once in a while and then start polling again. You can even wait for a minute or two before you start polling in order to see if the messages appear. So I'll wait for a minute now and then load this window back up. After waiting for a minute, you can see that I have a few different messages available. So let's go to the queue actions, click view delete messages, and start polling for those messages. Now I've tested this out a few times, so my receive count is higher than yours will be, but you can click on any of these messages for more details, copy the message body, and then take it over to something like a JSON form editor in order to see what's inside of it a little bit more easily. Now in here, we can see that this was one of the payloads that was supposed to fail with success false. And we can also see what the stack trace was and some more details about the function's invocation. So we could use this either to pass it on to another function to be processed for why it failed, treat it as a dead letter queue of sorts so we can debug it further, or maybe take some action in order to try and reprocess this function. Feel free to go back and contrast this with some of the successful responses. If you want any other examples of configuring event destinations, just go back to the same repository you cloned and take a look at the other examples. They should have comments that describe a bit more about them. Also, in the readme file, I've linked to a blog post with a bit more information on this topic. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and let us know if you have any questions in the comments section.